I'm Andrew Joseph Keith. In this video, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about this documentary that I made for my brother, Josh. In 66 days, I'm going to court. If found guilty, I will face $600,000 in fines and 22 years in federal prison. Before his trial date, I've been really interested in getting into documentary style filmmaking. There's a few documentaries that I would like to film coming up and so this was really just practice and then also just to help out my brother to get his story out, his side of the story. Um, the documentary didn't cover everything, the entire story. In fact, we spent like something like a couple days and like eight hours or ten hours in a podcast style environment just to get out, you know, all of the relevant information for that story. So it's a big story. It's uh, really dramatic obviously for him like he said in the documentary, he's facing $600,000 in fines and 22 year prison sentence potentially. And so it's a very big deal. The federal government is coming after him uh, because he was working with explosives. There was an accident and then they've been pretty much treating him like a domestic terrorist, even though it's just something that he's interested in. He was a licensed manufacturer of explosives. He wants to do it as a profession. And so they're really trying to throw the book at him and I think it's just a huge injustice. So that's kind of the motivation behind the documentary. If you're thinking about filming a documentary or even just writing a paper, or doing a video, you know, one of the first things is it should be something that you're interested in or something that you feel is important. So if you're interested in hearing his story and uh, getting more details, go watch that video. You can also order his book. I'll put a link for that in the description below. It's called Honey, I Blew Up Myself how I, a licensed explosives manufacturer, found myself in the crosshairs of the FBI. I think that's the title. And so that'll be in the description if you're interested in that. It's a great story, really worth it. And I really appreciate anybody that supports uh, my brother in him just trying to get the word out. Uh, he was really treated unfairly. He's really been persecuted by the FBI and other federal organizations that are bringing this case against him. The state has already basically absolved the case. They've gotten rid of the case. And they said, you know what, we recognize that this was a mistake. He was, there was an accident and he wasn't trying to uh, do harm to anybody, but the federal government wants to treat him like a terrorist. And so that is, it's pretty unjust. In this video, I just kind of wanted to talk about my process for doing that. I directed it and, and filmed it and edited it all together within a day. I just thought that that would be interesting to talk about. We had planned to do this. I mentioned like, hey, I've heard if you're interested in documentary filmmaking, you should do a documentary in a day and just put it together. So why don't we do this so that you can tell your story? And that was kind of the idea behind the documentary. As far as the equipment that I used, I used uh, the Lumix S5, which is kind of like a, a professional grade camera. It's like a $2,000 camera around there. There's a new version out. Um, I got mine used for like uh, $1,500 or something like that. And then there was a new version that came out, the Lumix S5 Mark II, and that's supposed to be really good, like one of the best quality cameras that you can get for the budget. So if you're interested in this type of thing, a little bit more like professional level, then I do recommend it. I really like it. The in-body stabilization is really good. The uh, autofocus on this camera is not very good, but that doesn't really matter because I was using a vintage lens. I was using a Canon FD 50 millimeter f1.4. I just checked. Uh, it's an f1.4 lens. It was like 120 bucks, but a lot of the times you can find it for under $100, and it's just a vintage Canon lens that people had recommended, so I grabbed it. I did like it. I thought it worked really well for this documentary, and I really liked the the footage that came out of the camera and the, the lens. I just bought a cheap adapter and put it onto the camera. And then I had a tripod, and that's what I used for the interview setting. We did the interview just in his uh, mobile home. It's just at my mom's house, and that's where we did the interview. I set him up next to the door of the mobile home because there was some light that was coming through on one side and I thought it lit pretty well. There were some other locations that we tried in the mobile home but they were all really poorly lit and so if you can get good lighting, especially good natural lighting is really nice, then like do whatever it takes. We had to kind of push the camera back and I was like sitting on the bed and it was kind of cramped but that was like the best lighting situation in that area and I think it turned out pretty well. And then I just used a lav mic, the same lav mic that I'm using here. It's a 
a Boya lav mic. It's like 10 feet long. I think it was like $30 on eBay. And I've liked it. I think the, the audio quality, when the mic is really close, it can be a cheaper mic and still sound pretty good if you have it close enough to the person. And so being able to just, you know, uh, put it up the, the shirt and then button it so that you can hear better audio, uh, really worthwhile investment because audio is half of the experience. So the first thing we did is we sat down and I press record and then we went over kind of the things that we wanted to cover. I didn't end up using any of that footage, but I just, when you're doing a documentary, you want to film as much as possible. And then after we'd filmed, then we went inside and he was just eating and I thought, oh, I'll get some B-roll footage so that it can play throughout the story. And it ended up kind of being a story in and of itself where, you know, he was eating and then he was talking on the phone and then he got in his truck and came to, to drop me off at my place so that I could edit the footage. But then throughout the documentary or throughout his storytelling, he w I was able to insert these pieces of footage so that it kind of told a story in and of itself and just kept a little bit more visual information on the screen. Obviously, there's a lot I have to learn. This is like my first kind of documentary, but you could just call it a YouTube video. It's only 20 minutes long, and so about the length that most people would spend on a YouTube video. I really am interested in getting better at interviewing, getting better at this documentary style creativity because my interest gets peaked in different things. And so uh, sculpture, that was like a big interest of mine. So I built the sculpting courses, the portrait sculpting course and the figure sculpting course with Proco.com. And now I'm really liking the, the filmmaking side. And so I've done that. There's also been times where, where I was really into like juggling or drawing. And so there's just different times throughout my life where my interest just I just focus on something and then I kind of obsess over it. And so I think that's a good thing for artists and creatives to have. Um, but it is difficult because being a creative, whether you're a YouTuber or an artist, a sculptor, whatever it is, it's very hard to monetize because there's lots of people that are like, oh, I like creating and so I want to be creative. So if you're the same way, I do recommend, you know, doing doing things on the side you know, outside of work if you have a job or being able to, to do it when you're younger and you don't have as much financial responsibilities. You know, now I'm a dad and I have uh, three kids. And so, there, you know, life is serious. We're, we're playing the game of life right now and it's, it's a serious game. And then the finances is a game in and of itself, just trying to figure out, okay, what works, what can bring in more money and how can I better support my family and those types of things. And something that I would like to do is build some documentaries that could be featured on streaming platforms. You know, maybe that'll happen, maybe it won't, but I do think it's a good skill uh, to have. And so that's what I'm gonna be working on. So for this documentary, I decided not to bring any lights. Like right now I have some soft boxes that I use to light up my studio space and they were cheap. So I think the, the two soft boxes that I use for the, the primary light and then the backlight were, I think, $100 for both. So they, they came and it was a good deal. And that's what I use for most of my filming stuff. Um, I recently put a hair light so you can see a little bit of the light above my hair. It's a little bit different color, but I don't think it doesn't bother me too much to have like a little bit warmer of a color for the hair light. And that I got just from Harbor Freight for, I think it was $15. It was on sale. So... There are many options that you could use. For this documentary, I chose to use just natural light. And I, I think it was a good choice. It felt pretty natural. And just have Josh kind of in his natural environment, what he would usually wear. And uh, he didn't dress up for it or anything. One of the things that I noticed was that I'm not the best interviewer. I wrote out a statement for Josh as a, as a character witness to, to state like, I think what the federal government is doing is unconstitutional in the way that they're pursuing Josh. So I had written out several bullet points as if I was, I was imagining as if I was the lawyer trying to defend him. Like what would I, what are the points that I would bring up? So I had all these in mind and then I felt like at times I was trying to like pull out these arguments or these things from Josh. And so it wasn't a very natural process. That's something that I need to watch out for in myself, being willing to let the story go a little bit differently than I have imagined or let people say, you know, in their own voice, what 
in their own perspective what is going on. I think there were also some times where Josh would make a statement. And when you're talking, when you're not used to being on camera, and even when you are used to it, sometimes you say things that don't actually make sense. Like you, you're thinking of one thing, but then you forget to mention it or emphasize it right before you say a related thing. And so connecting those dots can be difficult for the person that's watching. That was kind of my job as the as the director and as the person that's interviewing. And I felt that there were some points where I should have asked what, well, can you clarify a little bit on that? Or who who is doing what you're talking about right now? Because he would say they would do this or something. And then, but he mentioned a few people. So is it the hospital? Is it the FBI agents? Is it the the jailers? Like who who is the they that we're talking about? So things like that, that I could have improved on. That's what I'm hoping to get better at as I continue. So for those that have followed my channel for a little bit, you know that mostly it's sculpture related stuff. I'm hoping to branch out a little bit more, just things that I'm interested in, you know, more documentary type stuff. I've done a series where it's create and conjecture where I talk about current events. And then uh, while I'm sculpting, I just kind of talk about things and listen to like news podcasts and then just talk about current stories. So things like that. So I hope that you guys will be patient with me. And if there's videos that you'd like to see in the future or topics you'd like me to cover, I hope you'll comment those. And we'll see. My channel is small enough that I feel like I can still be pretty expressive and experiment. But I'm at the point as an artist where I feel like I need to, I need to grow. And that growth will come from trying it, uh, different things and then just seeing what people are interested in, what videos do well. If you haven't watched that documentary, you can find the link down below. And if you'd like to support Josh, you know, getting his book is helpful to him and just, you know, sharing the story, sharing the, the video. You know, the, the federal, a lot of the federal agencies have really become very corrupt and very divorced from the original intention of the founders of the United States. They really intended for the federal government to have very limited powers and to basically stay out of your business and just take care of foreign affairs and things like that. They wrote the Constitution and the amendments to the Constitution to say these are the things that the federal government cannot do. We're tying their hands. They can't do these things. And everything that they're doing with regards to my brother is a violation of the Constitution. They're they're basically coming in and saying, you know, the Constitution says this, but we, the FBI, we don't have to abide by that. Uh, we can we can create these rules and regulations, and then, you know, threaten six hundred thousand dollars in fines and twenty two years in prison for violations of these regulations that themselves are unconstitutional. So I think it was a huge injustice. I think Josh, if he had the financial resources to hire an attorney, it wouldn't even be an issue. So it's something that I felt strongly about. And so I was happy to, to film this and, and put it out there. Hopefully it's something that people find interesting and engaging. I really struggled with uh, the audio when it comes to creating engaging audio and especially like secondary audio. So I'd be curious what you guys think if you thought that um, it was too much or if you had tips or things to watch. Um, I'm always up for suggestions on ways to improve. As always, I hope you guys are able to stay creative with whatever you enjoy doing and stay productive and try to do a lot, try to create more than you consume. We spend so much time, you know, scrolling and consuming content that I hope you'll be able to take some time to create because I think we need both of those things. We need to create stuff. Being able to consume and learn from others is also valuable, but at least for me in my life, you know, I may be doing a little bit more of the consuming that I should be, and I should be creating more. So whether that's sculpting, whether it's drawing, painting, you know, creating videos, whatever you're passionate about, spend some time doing that. It'll be good for you and it'll be good for other people that are able to enjoy what you have created. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.